Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Wednesday. It's July 26. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and once again, it's just a trading range day. We did have a downward uh, bias most of the day with a downtrend here. You can see it. It was a little hard to find. It wasn't really that hard to find the main trend line because it was off the first two swings. But finding the lower side, I mean, early on I had it down here and I kept looking for prices to come lower. But because of the trading range, uh, it just, you know, that's what I attributed it to. But in the end, I just think the channel was up here and we had a little overshoot earlier on. And really, this is just sideways. When you see prices going sideways like this, and consistently above and below the EMA like this. Uh, notice how we're, we're above, we're below, we're above, we're below, above, below, above, below, above. That's the trading range. And when you see that, just be thinking trading range. Uh, although you couldn't discount this trend line, uh, especially when it touched here, uh, because that was your third touch and your confirmation, and it works right off those first two swings. Um, you get a little failed break higher. It is, it is going into the noon hour, which this was an FOMC announcement day. And you really, and, and you know, that's the volatility from an FOMC day. And so that's, that's nothing. Um, I mean, you know, some FOMC days, you know, you, you see 10, 12 point swings quickly in one direction or the other. So that just shows you how dead the market really is right now. And so you got to be careful going, uh, you know, entering a trade into that noon hour going into a one o'clock. So you're better off just to stay out. That's what that circle is. Um, but I also somebody made a comment. Uh, there were a couple of comments about how dead the market was and um, or has been the last, you know, last bit. And this, I mean, that's not uncommon for this time of year. It's the summer. A lot of professional traders are on vacation. Um, a lot of people in Wall Street take vacations. The market just kind of takes a breather. Oh, yeah, so this is not uncommon at all. It does, maybe it seems a little bit deader than normal, but the market hadn't been very volatile going into this. So for that reason, it's probably going to seem a little quieter than normal. But trust me, it'll come back. It'll pick up. But the key is you can still make money. Even in this kind of market, you just have to be real patient. And you just have to wait. And uh, I tell people that the key, you know, the, the first key to this is learning how to read the chart. Chart. But the second key is learning to control your the mental aspects of it. There's so much of what we do is mental. You have to be able to sit here patiently and sometimes go for an hour or two without taking a trade. And if you can't do that, if you struggle to do that, you're going to probably struggle to be profitable. But, uh, you know, if it doesn't get too tight, like right through here, it's really starting to get real tight. Um, and right in here, uh, if it doesn't get too tight, then, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't have a problem. It's not that hard to make money on a, range day but if it gets really tight like this it gets hard to make money and you just have to make a command decision you know do, do i want to trade this failed breakout here well the lows are just right here so there's not a lot of room but the main lows are down here so if we push on through uh even if we just test the lows here we're, you're probably going to be okay so uh in that case i took that trade or i like that trade i marked that trade uh, you got a lower high here on what looks like a breakout pullback low, but it's right back into those lows. And so I just don't think you really want to risk it. Um, however, you're probably looking, there's your first leg. So you're probably looking to see if you get a measured leg. And you can see we just about got that with a news item. Or we did. We, went, we actually got it by a tick, and then we bounced and got right back in there. So you got your two legs down. And really, this was the second leg. Um, and we came within, you know, three or four ticks right there. So that's what we were shooting for. And we just couldn't get there because of your support across here. And when we broke lower, it was a failed break lower. So, and there are two legs down right there as well. Measure the first leg. And then there's your second leg. And you missed that measured move by tick. So you expected a little bit of a bounce there. 
but um, you don't have a whole lot of room. So, and you don't really have a great signal bar here, and that's the main reason that's green. If it had been a good signal bar, I would have marked it uh, uh, blue, but we just don't have a very good signal bar there. And somebody actually asked that question about the signal bars. Uh, the only time you don't have to worry about your signal bar is on a failed second entry long, a failed second entry short, or a sure trap like that. Uh, I don't consider this, even though you do, a lot of times you'll trap people in and out here, um, on these failed break lowers, I don't consider that a trap where you have where you can ignore your signal bar. You still need a good signal bar here, and that's why that's green instead of blue. So um, keep that in mind. So don't don't confuse that. But let's talk about the trades. We'll wrap up today, and uh, won't take long once again. But uh, notice uh, on the way up here, you got your first leg. I'd measure it here first. And then there's your second leg, and you can see that's basically a perfect measured move. But I'd also measure that last little push up there, right there. And in case we went higher, that would be your second target. But we didn't get there, so we had two legs up, and then we reversed. And notice, notice that little break higher, and it turns, it instantly turns down and closes on its almost low, and you're good ways away from the EMA. I like that trade. Um, it looks like congestion there. It is kind of congested, but when the reason it's congested is because it's so far away from the EMA and the buying's drying up and you kind of get equilibrium there a minute before it snaps back. And that's common. And I, I love those trades. That's and, and if you catch that one, you know, you can ride that all the way down to the low and that and right out of the gate before it's even, you know, the regular session just after, you know, you've entered a trade before the set regular session even opens and you've already had a nice move with the runners here. So there's your ideal trade right out of the gate. And then you don't have to worry too much about the rest of the day because you've already got a runner in the bag here. And, you know, I'd look to exit right here and it definitely would have exited when it bounced the second time here. Um, I usually try to exit where, where I think it's going to bounce and that's where I'll exit. So it was tempting right here. This went right through the EMA. It's just the first entry though. And it's right into all those lows and we just bounce there. So you can't risk going short there. So just sit tight. Um, it bounces again. Uh, you, I really don't think you want to go long there. Um, it would have worked, but I just, I don't like it. This is your signal bar. This is an inside bar. It is a second entry. Uh, if you want to be aggressive, you could probably enter there. Um, I'm not crazy about it, but your, your entry would be above this bar, but your stop has to go below that bar. Uh, and it would have worked. And there's a failed second entry short right there, but uh, you've already had a break of this trend line. You've tried to go higher. So what happens if you just go one tick or something? And basically what happens if what, exactly what you see happens. That's what you're afraid of is it goes just enough to get the new eye and then it turns down. And so you're better off just to skip that. And uh, you don't really want to go short. You might go short here because it's failed break. And now you got two leg correction. So you may get that next leg down like this. Um, and like I said, your low here is way is really way down here. So I kind of like that one. Um, you know, that's a trade you probably want to take. And notice where it bounces. Same place again. That's a pretty good signal bar right there. Uh, but it's the first entry. When it breaks above it, plus you end up getting another sideways bar that's bearish. So there's not really a setup there. Um, you're still looking for prices maybe to go lower, but you can't really go short there because it's right into all those lows. It's a lower high. Um, you don't have anything like a measured move, but there's too big a chance it bounces here. So I marked that one green just because it's such a big bearish bar. Um, if it could back up enough and you could get in where you could get out before these, this little double bottom, these matching lows, maybe you try to enter that. It would have worked, but again, I just think it's too risky. Um, and now you got two legs down and you got a little failed breakout. We just talked about this. Uh, you just don't get a very good signal bar. This this signal bar here is probably okay, but it went lower and then closes in the middle. 
So that's really a one bar trading range. And then this one breaks higher above it, but it's just, there's not a very good signal bar. So um, this one did close on its high. So you might have considered entering there, but your stop would still go below here, and this is still your signal bar. So I made it green for that reason. It would have worked, but you need to make sure you can your entry is good enough so that you can get out before you get back up to these highs right here. And really, you can see that spot right there. It turns out, of course, you didn't have this yet, so if you slide this all the way over, you're probably looking at this as being your exit uh, location. And then that would be next. So and you can see we actually got to right there where those closes are, and it turns down again. It was, it was enough to work. Um, but I don't like entering out of all that congestion right there. Um, I, when it broke higher and turned down right here at this previous support resistance line, uh, and gives you that bearish bar, I like entering there just to see if we push back down and make that new low, especially when it confirms that trend line. That's the main, there's a couple of reasons. There's, there's, um, you, you notice you got your support resistance line there. You got your trend line there. You got a failed breakout. You got a bearish bar. Um, there's several different reasons to consider going short right there. Uh, you do have to worry about this support resistance line, but We've already pushed through once, so it's kind of cleared the way to here. So this is more the area you're working worrying about down here, and you got enough room there. So you get a lower high right here, but that's right into the noon hour. It's not a very it's not a good signal bar, and this was holding again across here. So I wouldn't add on or anything, or I wouldn't enter here if I wasn't already in. But you probably would hold this to see if it would push a little bit lower, at least give you another failed break lower. And you probably would have got out before it bounced again. So, uh, and then you don't want to do anything in here. This is the FOMC news the hour prior and just maybe 15 or 20 minutes afterwards till it looked like it was, we were back in this little trading range and things had settled down. And notice you get a failed break higher and then you get a lower high here. And, uh, you know, it's obvious this little trend channel is working now and this is the first break of it. And so you're looking for prices to maybe test that low. So I like that one. Uh, again, it's into that support resistance, but that's moved down a little bit now. And really the more important is that little double matching high there and then this low. But by this time, you can figure out that this channel is actually, the trend channel line is here. And this is a confirmed trend line. And you get that break and... So you're looking for prices to try to make a new low. And the bias is somewhat down at this point because we've been making lower highs and lower lows all the way down until this news item. And we're still coming off a lower high. And so when you got that little uh, failed, notice that's a failed second entry long. Here's your new high, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. Uh, it's a failed break higher out of that, above that support resistance line. It's a bearish bar. Um, we're looking for prices to try to make a new low. There's actually a trend line working down there. You would have drawn it off those first couple of swings. Of course, that's not enough to sell you on that trend line. You need a few more touches like here and then another one. And uh, Of course, you're after the, you know, it's too late here. And that would have been your reversal pattern right there. If you entered there, you would have had to kind of ride this sideways stuff out, but you wouldn't have got stopped out, and that would have been a nice move down. So you, if you got in here, you could have ridden this all the way down. You're probably going to exit right in here. If you're like, you know, at least I am, I'm not going to ride this out and see and give it a chance to bounce. I'm going to exit and look for another entry, or if I'm, you know, that late in the day, I'm just going to exit. So, uh, but yeah, slightly downward bias uh, all day, even though we're going sideways, but in the big picture, it's, it's a range type day and, uh, it's another slow day. Not a lot of trades. You see, there's only three, four red ones and the rest of them are green. And so you just have to be patient on a day like this, but, but trust me, you can still make money on a day like this. Um, trading range days I really like because if you catch these failed breaks like here and even here and here, if you catch those, um, you know, you're generally going to 
you, you're going to make money. And uh, a lot of times you'll catch them, like right here, you caught a major high for the day. Um, same thing here and here, really, too. So uh, and by this time, it was, even though we got overall kind of a range day, it still got a downward bias to it. And that was pretty obvious. So, uh, but yeah, not much else we can talk about. So I'm going to wrap it up. Um, just learn to be patient on days like this. Um, study your charts because you're going to get more days like this than you are big trend days. And so if you learn to trade these kind of days, I, I don't really particularly say I like a day like this, but I like range days where you got a lows are down here and the highs are up here and you got a little room in between and you just, and when it consistently tests those lows and bounces and goes back to the top and tests the top and turns down. I mean, I love those kind of days because they're so predictable. You just buy every time it comes down to the low and sell every time it comes down to the high, and you can't hardly go wrong. Uh, you have to wait on the setup. You don't just arbitrarily buy. But notice what happens every time prices came down through here. Uh, if if you'd have bought every time you got a low here or a failed break lower, even even near the news hour, if you buy here, you get an easy scalp. Same thing here. If you sold off the highs every single time, you got an easy scalp. So just keep keep that in mind. Study those these kind of charts that of these kind of days, and and learn how to to make sure that how you trade this. Just l trust the rules and trade it, um, and you'll find that you'll do pretty good. I mean, I show this to you all the time, and it, it, it's always the same thing. If you would have just bought the lows all day and sold the highs all day, you'd have made money. And if you follow the rules, you, you know, you don't, you're not even, you know, it's just almost a sure thing. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow and wrap up our week. Uh, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.